On the surface, this question seems simple, but it's hiding a trap. We need to find how many integers up to 1,000 make this expression divisible by 7. Are we supposed to test n equals 1, then 2, then 3, all the way to 1,000? Absolutely not. That would be a nightmare. The answer isn't just a number. It's a beautiful pattern. And the key is a special property of the number 7. Our goal is to understand the relationship between this expression and the number 7 without brute force. The language of divisibility is best expressed through modular arithmetic. The condition is divisible by 7 means that the expression leaves a remainder of 0 when divided by 7. Mathematically, we write this as a congruence. n squared plus 3 n plus 2 is congruent to 0 modulo 7. The structure of the quadratic expression is the key to simplifying the problem. The expression on the left is a standard quadratic, and it can be factored, which is the crucial insight. It becomes the product of the quantity n plus 1 and the quantity n plus 2. This is a massive simplification. Now we arrive at the logical core of the solution which relies on a special property of prime numbers. We have a product of two integers whose result is divisible by 7. The critical fact here is that 7 is a prime number. This means it cannot be split into smaller integer factors. Therefore, for their product to be divisible by 7, 7 must divide at least one of the factors cleanly. This property is known as Euclid's lemma. To see why primality is essential, consider a composite modulus like 6. 2 times 3 is divisible by 6, yet 6 divides neither 2 nor 3. The logic would fail. Because our modulus is prime, we can confidently split the problem into two distinct cases. We can now solve for the required remainders of entrice. In the first case, if n plus 1 is a multiple of 7, then n must have a remainder of 6 when divided by 7. In the second case, if n plus 2 is a multiple of 7, n must have a remainder of 5. Our theory predicts that only integers with a remainder of 5 or 6 will work. Before counting, let's verify this with a few examples. Let's test n equals 5. The expression evaluates to 42. 42 is divisible by 7. The theory holds. Now for n equals 6. The expression evaluates to 56. 56 is also divisible by 7. This also works. What about a number that should fail, like n equals 4? The expression is 30. 30 is not a multiple of 7, confirming our prediction. The logic is sound. Confident in our conditions, we can now count the integers from 1 to 1,000 that satisfy them. First, we count the integers of the form 7k plus 5. We set up the inequality for n between 1 and 1,000. Subtracting 5 from all parts gives this range. Dividing by 7, we find the bounds for the integer k. The possible integer values for k range from 0 to 142. This gives a total of 143 solutions for this case. Next, we count the integers of the form 7k plus 6. We apply the same process, subtracting 6 from all parts and dividing by 7. Notice that 994 divided by 7 is exactly 142. Again, the values for k range from 0 to 142, giving us another 143 solutions. We now combine the counts from our two distinct cases. The total is simply 143 from the first case plus 143 from the second. The final count is 286.
But this number is not just an answer. It reveals the deeper pattern we were looking for. Our analysis proved that in any set of seven consecutive integers, there are precisely two solutions, the one with a remainder of five and the one with a remainder of six. This implies that the solutions occur with a constant frequency of two-sevenths. If we estimate this over our range, two-sevenths of 1,000 is approximately 285.7. Our exact count of 286 aligns perfectly with this expectation. What began as a search for specific numbers has revealed a simple, periodic, and elegant structure hidden within the integers.